Welcome mm -hmm. back. This is still Breakfast Central. Don't forget to use the hashtag NC Breakfast Central to join our conversations. Follow us on social media mm. at New Central TV. And if you have to leave your TV, which of course you can mm. watch us on Start Time Channel 274, take us with you with our mobile app mm. on YouTube as you go, as well as our website. All of those avenues are available for you to be part of our conversation. Yes, indeed. And we're going straight to one that's quite interesting. Now, over the years, Nigerian comedy has grown to be an industry and that uh, we can attribute this to the hard work put in by the numerous comedians, both upcoming and, you know, the A-listers from the likes of Ali Baba, popularly referred to as the Nigerian king of comedy, to the likes of uh, Bovi, Basket Mouth, MC Abe, Oke Bakasi. The comedy scene in Nigeria is indeed blessed with talent uh, who are relevant both right here home and abroad. Now, beyond the shores of Nigeria, these comedians have continued to carve a niche for themselves with amazing collaborations and sold-out shows. Oh. But with the pandemic, the comedy industry, as with many industries, was hard hit. This is as a result of COVID-19 protocols, which prohibit large gatherings leading to the cancellation of shows. But amid all of this, many comedians are finding a way, and Shayi Brown happens to be one of them. Now, Shayi has been working hard to make things happen, and he just announced that he will be releasing his comedy special, Nigerian American, on Netflix on March 10th, 2021. Well, Shayi Brown joins us now from Los Angeles, California, in the U.S., to give us the details and more. Shayi, uh, good morning uh, in Lagos, Nigeria, but uh, I know good how evening. <laughs> good evening in Los Angeles to you. <laughs> morning good evening <laughs> so we want to say first a very big congratulations to mm. you on this massive win um and we know that probably it's opening a lot more doors for you so just quickly take us through the feelings that time when netflix finally said yes to you and you signed on the dotted line was mm. it really like mama i've made it how did you feel well um it was kind of surreal you know mm. um it was it was something I dreamt about, something that you know I wanted to do. So when when it became a reality, it was it was I see why I still needed to pinch myself, like, whoa, well, it's really happening. You know, uh, it's been a long time coming. So I, you know what uh, the average now you just say, Well, all glory to God, it's not my power, it's not my mind, it's God, it's God. That's, that's what Very it Nigerian of you. <laughs> yeah. Well well, Shay, we, we have, you know, comedians who have, you know, broken through all the uh, barriers all over Africa, from South Africa, Trevor Noah, who is quite popular, to Annie Kansimi from Uganda, and even Kenya's Erika Omondi. Uh, but it seems Nigerian comedians have an edge yeah. of some sort, if, if you might agree. We have seen Nigerians, you know, uh, born comedians uh, get recognized on international stage, like the likes of Yvonne Oji, uh, you know, had a Mama I Made It special on HBO back in 2020. Also, likes of Basket Mouth also had his collaborations with Comedy Central. Now, what do you think makes Nigerian, you know, comedians and Nigerian comedy genres uh, stand out from their counterparts on the African continent? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll attribute that to the fact that, you know, we're a multi-ethnic uh, background, you mm. know, and the differences in our ethnic backgrounds, multicultural, and of course our parents. I just want to believe that Nigerian parents are, you, they are the unique set of human beings, <laughs> you know. Nigerian parents are supposed to be a school that, and that uh, also mixed with, uh, mixed with the fact that men travel a lot. And so they do a comparison of our lifestyle to what we experience when we travel mm. outside the country. Mm. So I think that makes us very unique. I don't think any country in the world travel like Nigerians because mm. there's no, I think on record, there's no country in the world that you go that you don't find in Nigeria. We even make wow. joke about it, you know, yeah. that, uh, you know, uh, if you go to any country, you don't find a Nigeria, you just leave that country. That means there's no money there. <laughs> <laughs> that makes us unique. Uh, very true. All right, so Shayi, we want to introduce um, our audience to a bit of your comedy. Mm. So uh, let's take this quick insert and we'll continue the conversation. Just hold on. And also, uh, I'm introducing this comedy. That means I'm supposed to make you laugh. And uh, that means in the course of the night, if after everything I've said, you're not laughing. It's not because I'm not funny. Your problem is more than my talent. <laughs> <laughs> That's just it, because I'm not trying. Uh, I'm always proud to be an African, and I believe everywhere I go, I'm supposed to be an African ambassador. 
Wow. Wow. So you're very <laughs> proud to be African, but I like that part. It's not mm. because you're not funny. It's because the <laughs> problems are more than your talent. But as we see with Nigerian movies, music, and our jollof rice, mm -hmm. yes, I said it, there is a level of acceptance Global. that other Africans have of content that comes from Nigeria. Why do you think this is? Is it just because we're the most populous country on the continent? Or is there something really about how we take our life experiences, as mm. you talked about parents, Nigerian parents being a school, how we take those things and we sort of turn them into things that make people laugh? You know, um, I, I say this about us. Um, you know, the way also entertainment and security and sports, mm. it is the same way. I would probably say that at all, you know, all African countries look up to Nigeria. And um, if you really look at it, if you compare Nigeria to South Africa, uh -huh. I think technology-wise, they are more advanced. But it is just the individual Nigerians. There's, there's a resilient spirit in us uh -huh. that just wants to excel. We have that spirit of excellence in us. You understand? Uh -huh. I remember when they started the MTV Base uh, Video Music Awards. The first two years or so, the first few years, Nigeria probably just won one or two awards, but the moment Nigeria started start traveling to South Africa to study cinematography or filmmaking, started traveling out. I remember there was one year out of 15 categories, uh -huh. Nigeria won 12, Nigeria alone. And this uh -huh. is an African thing. Uh -huh. So it, just, it, it says a lot about our spirit, uh, the individual, I think it's the individual Nigerian, you know, where they call us the happiest people in the world. You know, that in spite of what we're going through, Nigeria still find ways to make them happy. Do you know that on my own, when I just, when I get home and I'm tired and I feel down, I need to entertain myself. You know where I go? Where? I just go on Nigerian bloggers, especially the, uh, the comedians. Oh. You know, we, we call them uh, social media comedians. Yeah. And they never disappointed me. And you know, sometimes it's not even the posts. I, I just go to the comments. The comments, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Nigerians are just funny. That's it. Oh, which... And I think one of, one of the things I find really hilarious is the way Nigerians attack DJ Copy. Oh. I remember one incident where she complained that uh, she uh, she lost her voice. Somebody said, buy another truth. Your father has money. Who oh says my, that? Oh my, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm not going to copy that if you get my drift, Shay. All right, Shay. Well, how accepting, you know, how accepting... <laughs> I'll let that slide. I'm leaving the two of you. Well, well, how accepting, you know, have, you know, U.S. audiences been, you know, in terms of your comedy? Uh, you know, share your perspective about, you know, uh, have, they, have they probably never heard that before, but how has it been, you know, doing comedy in the U.S.? We just saw you on stand-up, you know, with your native. That's, how was that? Well, you know what? Um, I would say that before I got here, um, there's a Ghanaian comedian who's been here since he was 13. He's been in the U.S. since he was 13, Michael okay. Blackson. Oh, so okay. Michael Blasi kind of started that, you know, style of wearing a dashiki to, you know, they call dashiki agbada, mm. but they put dashiki here. So the best dashiki to perform on stage, you know, and um, he started that. Then uh, what? You see, Americans are tired of hearing the same thing, so they want to hear from other cultures. You know, mm. what makes us who we are, and you know, it's telling those stories that makes it very interesting. But the difference is that there's a style of comedy that is practiced in America and it's a little bit different from how we do it, you know, in Nigeria, uh -huh. you know. So I have to take time to learn the American style of comedy, you know, like one-liners and just straight to the point. Their punchline is like back to back like that, you know. Or like, you know, sometimes they're not patient with you to build up your story. Uh -huh. So you have to just, you know, like be able to deliver your punchline like back to back, uh -huh. you know. So it took me a while. And eventually, you know, I got a hang of it. And that was what led to what we're doing now. All right. Wow. Congratulations again on what you're doing now. Um, but we also know, so even whether it's the U.S. or Nigeria, South Africa, anywhere, there will be people who will be on the comedy circuits for mm -hmm. their entire lives. And they'll play nothing more than small bars and joints and things like mm -hmm. that. And then you have the shining lights who will all of a sudden just boom. It's a Netflix special. It's an HBO special, whatever it may be. What do you think 
makes one stand out from the rest of the comedians in any industry, in any part of the world? Because I think it's something that is in the, um, that runs through every mm -hmm. every comedian that has somehow made it to the forefront, uh, from Kevin Hart, who really busted himself for a number of years, mm. to now selling out Madison Square Garden. That's never been done before. Um, so you see, that, you see that happening in comedy now. What makes people stand out? Well, you know what? There, there are so many factors. Um, number one is the factor of being original, mm. telling your own story. You know? Because when you're original, you tell your own story, uh, it would be hard to say for someone that so you copied me because you know that that happens a lot where you just lift somebody's joke and you know make it yours. Okay. So where you're original, then uh, number two, you know consistency, you know hard work, consistency, and number three, you you can you cannot exclude be on your side because Kevin Hart is not the most talented comedian or the funniest comedian. No, there are several Americans that are you know American comedians that are funnier than Kevin Hart. But I, I, I guess it was just favored. It was just his time. And it just happens that Dave Shipper wasn't around. Uh, Cat Williams had issues with the government and, you know, it wasn't himself. And th there, was, there was room for another black, you know, uh, committing to be, you know, the number one dude. And it just and he happens was to ready. be the one that was around there. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, and yeah, and that's another, he was ready. So he was original. If you listen to all of Kevin Hart's um, uh, stand-ups, you would notice that he talks about his family. He talks about the same thing. Mm. He talks about his family, talks about his children. His ex-wife. He talks about what's going on in the country and how he relates to it. He does the same thing over and over and over again. You know, if, that's why in his letter he said, what else do you guys want me to talk about? I <laughs> talk about things that are happening to me. What I got is my family, you know. All right. And, you know, that, those, those are just the factors. All right, Shay, let's talk about, you know, one of the issues that we can't just escape. There's no doubt that, you know, COVID-19 has impacted negatively this pandemic on everything in spheres of life, including comedy, shows, industry as a whole, you know, where people's livelihoods are actually also tied to this. So how, you know, did COVID-19 affect you, you know, and your business and your comedy stand-up? How, how have you coped? How has it been? Well, show-wise, we were all badly hit. Everybody in entertainment, we were oh. all badly hit. Uh, so this is the moment where everybody was like, okay, all right, what other talent do I have? What other thing can I do, you know, during this period? I actually started a, a weekly Instagram uh, show, but, you know, after a while I got tired. So I just took this time as, you know, let, let me start writing. Because I know that this, this special I have on Netflix mm. was shot in 2019. Okay. Mm. So I just, you know, I'm like, okay, all right, well, I hope for like, eight, nine months now. So I just started writing. I'm like, you know what? I want to believe that Netflix will take that up. So in case they say, man, we like this, give us another one. I don't want to be like, oh, let me go and work on it. So uh -huh. I started working, you know, because it's time for you. And, you know, comedy is also about, as a comedian, you're also a social commentator, you know. Uh -huh. So, you know, you take things from, you know, current affairs, contemporary social issues, and what's affecting you and what affects others, you know. And as an immigrant in America, how you cope with what's happening now? Because, you know, during this pandemic, a lot of Americans are like, oh my God, uh, I'm depressed. Uh, I want to commit suicide. I, I, I want to give up. Some of them will cry. But to us, Nigeria, we're like, well, as long as we still get some things from the government, we're good, right? Yeah. yeah. And we cannot evict us from our houses. We're still good. We can eat. We can sleep. Oh, okay, we're good, you know? And that, that's what, uh, you know, th those are the things that, you know, stand us out from the rest, you know. But yeah, we were hit by it. Just do is, you know, you do online shows. Everything's virtual now. Mm. Uh, fortunately, a lot of Nigerians still do. You know Nigerians now. There's, you cannot stop us from partying. So no. Nigerians are like, if we cannot party, we can do virtual parties. So we still host a bit of virtual, you know, parties here and there. Initially, at the initial stage, it was kind of hard. You know, mm. it was difficult, like, you know, working with technology. But we got a hang of it. And that's like, you know, the normal thing now, you know. Yeah. Mm. All right, so let's talk about one of so, Nigeria's yeah, uh, premier, one of Nigeria's premier comedians, OK Bakasi. Mm. And recently he shared a video where he was lamenting how the pandemic has affected the industry, as you said, and how the industry is not getting the support mm. it needs from government. We'd like to get your thoughts on what he said. So let's quickly listen to this. But let me tell you, as an ordinary comedian, what I've been going through. So to do a successful show in Lagos as a comedian, I look for about 20 million naira. You pay venue, you pay event service providers, you employ maybe about a hundred people 
create jobs for them to have a successful show. And in the course of struggling to raise funds to do your die your successful show, some of the pastors would even discourage their congregation from coming. They would say, oh, it's a worldly event. The governor will not be in attendance because, oh, he's very busy. Then the media will not give you free publicity until you pay. So you spend all this money, you go through all this stress and create jobs for 100 other youth without people really coming to your aid. You just tap into goodwill and some of your friends. Now COVID-19 has been here for more than a year. Nobody is talking about this set of Nigerian entertainers, Nigerian youth who have chosen not to do violence. Who have chosen to instead create jobs for other people. Nobody's talking about how are they going to survive. No palliative, no kind of support. So what do you think about what he said, particularly as we look at the knockdown effect? One show, one person employs so many people when Thousands. they're doing those yeah. things, putting them together. But he's talking about no support. And we hear about stimulus checks being sent. We hear about money being given uh, to at least help make sure that Americans in this instance are able to put money back into the economy and can do what they need to do. What do you think about what Oke Bakasi said? You know, let me tell you, um, comedy shows in Nigeria is more capital intensive uh -huh. than it is over here. But I spent less than $10,000 to do my show, the one I put on Netflix. I know that you can't do a show in Nigeria with $10,000 unless you're probably just using a very small, $10,000 $10, probably just pay for your home. Uh -huh. And so I, I can I can understand Oke Bakasi's plight. And also, uh, you know, in, in the developed countries in Europe and America, they, you know, they give back to the citizens, you uh -huh. know, um, if you earn below a quarter of a million, no, no, sorry, I think $130,000, the, the government will give you money. Uh -huh. um, if you uh, operate a business and your business is affected, they were giving loans that, you know, that, that, that I think zero interest and uh -huh. they give you enough time to be able to pay it off. I know friends of mine who got $100,000 loans. Wow. Some of them got $50,000, some of them $40,000. All right. Just because their business were hit. Plus, you know, in a situation like that, you, you, you can't complain because the government is making sure that, uh -huh. you know, because you know, you know Americans, any small thing, they will tell you that they are depressed, they are psychologically hit and all that. And the government don't want a, a, a higher rate of, in spite of that, there's even a higher rate of suicide and depression, you know? Yeah. And, and that's money being given to a lot of people. So, uh, all right, so I, I said that because I talked a lot about Yes, uh, especially after what we just passed through doing that thing they call lockdown or several stages of lockdown. You know, mm -hmm. only comedians would have helped us out, whether it was Instagram, online. So the work of Ni uh, Nigerian comedians cannot be taken away or put you know, under light. But Shay, before we let you go, what can we expect uh, from the Netflix special? Well, what I'll tell you about this uh, Netflix special called, that's why I titled it Nigerian American is. Mm. By the time you're done watching it, you'll be proud to be a Nigerian. All and right. Be proud of Nigerians overseas. All right. So, Sheyi, we know you're coming into the country, so we look forward to seeing you when mm. you do come in in right. terms of promoting the show. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us we this morning. Your evening. We free you now. Please go and sleep. <laughs> Thank you for staying up to be with us right here on Breakfast Central. I'll be coming into the studio. I'll be coming to the studio. I All right. You're great. very much welcome, Yashi. Have a good one. All right. <laughs>